Good day. Today's lecture is about set definitions. The outline of our presentation will go like this. We'll start with defining the meaning of uh, element, set, and class. Then we'll go on to some set properties, including being countable, uncountable, finite, or infinite. We'll go on to subsets and the proper subset. We'll define universal set and empty set. And we'll conclude with when do we call two sets as being disjoint or mutually exclusive? Now, the basic thing we have is the elements. We have different elements. These elements, if we combine them together, we form what we call a set. So uh, elements grouped together form a set. And then if we have a group of sets, we create what we call a class. So we can say formally set is nothing but collection of objects. These objects are called elements. And then a class is a set of sets. Uh, in terms of notation, we're going to use uh, capital letters to represent a set, like in this case. And then we use small letters to represent the elements. Uh, in terms of notation, we can say that A belongs or the element A belongs to the set A, or the element A does not belong to set A. So this is the new notation. How do we define a set? How do we do define a set? We have two ways. Either we use tabular, where we list all the elements, like here we say six, seven, eight, and nine between brackets, or we can use a rule, let's say, by saying integers number between five and 10. Here are some examples. Uh, for example, Z is a set of integers, N is a set of natural numbers, R, real numbers, Q, rational numbers. And we can give you some examples by looking at a tabular definition. If you look at the even numbers, we can say that A is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. Equivalently, we can use the rule way of defining a set by saying A is all the natural numbers given that a is an even number. These are kind of defining the same thing in two different ways. <clears throat> now, let's, let's go over some properties of sets. We can say a set is being countable or uncountable, finite or infinite. Now, a countable set, in the countable set, elements can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers, which means you can count them. You can give them numbers, one, two, three, four. If you cannot do this, like in the case of uh, all numbers between 0 and 1. You cannot count them. There are infinite number of them. So, But in terms of counting, you cannot assign them numbers. It's a continuous domain. So they are not countable. We have countable or uncountable. We also have finite and infinite or infinite. A set is finite when it's empty, or you can... Once you start counting the elements, you are going to finish. So counting its element terminates. Finite number of elements. We have limited number of elements inside the set. If, that, if this is not the case, we call it infinite set. Now remember that these are two different ways. We can have countable finite or uncountable uh, infinite. There's two different adjectives. But now if, if it is finite, it must be countable. If the elements, if counting the numbers terminate, it means you can count them. We can also say that if it's uncountable, it automatically has infinite number of elements. Remember these two conditions. Now, to give you some examples, remember we, we recall these um, examples we just did in the previous slide for A, N, Z, and R. Think about them. Are they countable, uncountable, finite, or infinite? Clearly, A is countable. Because you can say this is element number one, number two, number three, you can count them. But it's infinite. The number of elements goes on. So it's countable infinite. The same is true for Z, N, and Q. You can assign numbers. But for the real number case, it's uncountable infinite. Because for a real number, for a real range, you cannot count the elements inside. We define the meaning of universal set and the null set. So uh, we have two experiments. Basically, we look at the 
tossing a coin and rolling a die. Uh, we define the universal set as uh, the set of all possible outcomes for the given experiment. Now, for example, if you have two coins and you're uh, tossing them, you can get a head or a tail. If there are two coins, you can get four different possibilities, head, head, or head, tail, tail, head, or finally tail, tail. If you consider all possibilities, we call it the universal set because any outcome of the experiment will belong to the set. If you are uh, rolling a die, like uh, in the second example, the possible outcomes are one out of six possibilities. So this set is represented as the universal set and we use capital S, which is reserved for the universal set. Now, uh, for any universal set made of uh, uh, capital S elements, we have uh, S, uh, we have certain number of elements, which is N. There are two raised to the power N possible subsets. So for example, if you look at rolling a die, there are capital N equal to six. You can create subsets out of this, starting with the null set. You can have a set of just one element or two, for example. You can have one and three. You can continue so on. And the number of possible subsets that you can create would be simply 64. Why? Because 2 raised to the power n and n equal to 6. So we have 64 possible outcomes. Just like we define the universal set, the opposite of that will be the null set, which is the set, the set that contains nothing. It's called the empty set, the null set, and it has no elements inside. Now, we can define subsets, proper subsets, and just joint sets. Uh, okay, for more than one set, we can do some relations. Uh, we have two definitions. The first is a subset. It's not a, using this notation. It's like smaller than or equal, but you don't have this angle. So you have uh, this notation for the subset. And if it's a proper subset, you can remove this kind of equal sign. It's not there. So think of this example. We have two sets, B and uh, A. There are four elements. These four elements are shared between B and A. So we can say that A is a subset of B, which means every element in A is also an element in B. Okay? You can call this a subset. Or even if you have some elements outside, uh, you can call it, uh, you can have some elements here. It's still a subset because there is nothing in A which is not in B. Formally, mathematically, we can say A belongs to, small a belongs to A, guarantees that small a belongs to B also. Now, in the case, uh, in the case that the, uh, the two sets are not equal, and there is an element outside, like this element, then, strictly speaking, you can say that these are now proper subsets, which means at least one element in B which is not in A. And uh, this is called proper subset. It's a real subset where you, you don't have this equality between them. So in proper subset, the two sets cannot be the same. Remember that, um, remember this statement? It says that the null subset is a subset, the null set is a subset of all possible sets. You know, the null subset has nothing, which means that uh, it, it satisfies the definition. We can say that two sets are disjoint or mutually exclusive if they don't share any element like you can see these two um, a and b they are not dis they are not they are disjoint which means they don't overlap with some symbols and this this is not disjoint because they are shared element but if they are separated like uh, in the example shown we can say that the two sets are not overlapping and they are disjoint to mutually exclusive now uh, here are some examples for you to go over exercise. I'm giving you a few sets, A, B, C, D, and F, and it's your job to describe them uh, being finite, infinite, or countable, uncountable. Are we using a tabular definition or rule definition? So um, just give you some descriptions. We can say, for example, that A is countable and finite. F is uncountable and uh, finite, uh, sorry, F is uncountable, you have a continuous domain, and infinite, then we have B is uh, presented in a tabular format because we are listing all the elements. A 
uh, is a subset of uh, B because it contains only uh, the odd numbers. I would assume this will continue four, five, six, seven. We can also say that uh, a C is a subset of F because this range is smaller than the F range. And we can also see that D, uh, which is 0, 0.0, is a subset of the continuous range. Now, what we will do in the next uh, presentation, we'll go from set definitions to um, some set operations, intersection, union, <coughs> difference, equality, and what have you. Thank you for your attention.